Praise the Lord. Amen. Father, your word is alive in our midst and we thank you that we can receive it with joy and with celebration and with faith. And we thank you that your word that goes forth this morning, we shall see manifest throughout this year unto the glory of your name in Jesus name. Amen. Let us be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to challenge myself this morning as we minister the word of God and say to you, you have not throughout the whole of 2021 heard a word this short. You have not throughout the whole of 2021 heard a word this short. We are in the word. Come with me. Number one, I need you to understand that our orientation is about the king's business and his kingdom. So if there's anything that we need to be conscious of throughout this year, it is the kingdom of God. What should we be conscious about? The kingdom of God. Here is the first place that raises awareness about the kingdom of God. We have a mandate from the king. What do we have? What do we have? Here is the mandate. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20. Let's read together. All power in heaven and on earth has been given me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to uphold all things that I have taught you. And behold, I am with you always, even until the end of time. Every morning when you wake up, remind yourself that you have a mandate from the King, our Lord Jesus Christ. And that mandate is to go and make disciples. That mandate is to remind you that as you do that, the Lord is with you and he will be with you until time ends. Amen. Number two, how we are going to stay conscious of the kingdom is because there is power for the mission of the kingdom. What do we have? Power for the mission of the kingdom. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. The Lord Jesus says, and let's read together. Wait in Jerusalem until you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Now I'm paraphrasing from that context of chapter 1. But the second thing that you need to remember is that the mandate of the kingdom is not predicated upon your strength. It is in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when you go out to witness, when you go out to make disciples, you must remind yourself that you do so in the power of of the Holy Spirit. Number three, I need you to understand that we have leverage from the word to be able to do what we are doing. We've got what we call kingdom leverage. What do we have? Kingdom. Now, in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14, let's read together. The Bible says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the earth as a sign, and thereafter, the end will come. So your leverage is the context that the Lord Jesus gives you. The Lord Jesus says, part of the last days is the manifestation of various things, such as wars will increase, nations will rise against nations, children will rebel against parents, the love of many people will grow cold, and, 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 and. He says, but among all these things, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, in all the earth, as a sign, as a witness. And you know, when the gospel of the kingdom is preached in greater manifestation, it is announcing the nearness of the return of the Lord Jesus. It is announcing the nearness 
of the soon and coming king. So we've got kingdom leverage and that's why we have to preach the gospel throughout this year. Now, number four, I need you to remind yourself that as you preach, you have to measure the impact of the gospel. As you preach, you have to measure the impact of the gospel. What do you need to do as you preach? Measure the impact of the gospel. Because if you don't measure the impact of the gospel, you will not know whether you are making progress. And here are the areas in which we measure the impact of the gospel. Number one, the spiritual fear, spheres of dominion. According to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. Now in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, God says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And then he gives us the sphere of dominion, the influence that we ought to be. He says, let him rule over the water, over the fish of the, of the sea, or rather the fish in the waters. Let him rule over the birds in the air. Let him rule over all the animals. So there's the three spheres of influence that we look at to see whether the kingdom that we preach is making the impact that it is supposed to do. It is, we look at the aquatic movement, we look at the atmospheric movement, and we look at the movement of the kingdoms of men on the earth. In other words, the gospel must touch the kingdoms of the water. Now, what you will see in this area also is there's a lot of pull to people who go and buy your twas. Um, they go and establish covenants with water spirits. Once those people are delivered, when those people come to the Lord Jesus, you know that the gospel is impacting the aquatic kingdoms. But in the air as well, there are spirits. The apostle Paul says, our fight, our battle is against Spiritual forces in heavenly places. There are spirits that are influencing people to do all kinds of things. And we know when those people are being delivered and set free, receiving the Lord Jesus and walking with him, that we are impacting the atmospheric kingdoms with the gospel. But we also have been given authority over the land. The land means that there are kingdoms of man, kingdoms of animals in the earth. And therefore, when we see men being delivered from the influence and control of other men to serve the Lord Jesus Christ that the gospel of the kingdom is making its impact. So these are the dimensions of dominion that we look at as we preach the gospel of the kingdom. The second part that we measure and look at for impact is geographical influence. Somebody say geographical influence. The gospel is meant to travel and that is why when the Lord Jesus was um, giving them the instruction to wait on the Holy Spirit, he said, once the Holy Spirit has empowered you and you start to preach the gospel, it will be preached in Jerusalem where you are and it will also be preached in Judea and then it will also be preached into Samaria and to the ends of the world. So we know that the gospel is reaching and impacting when it goes from where we are to the district where we are, or rather to the city city first, and to the district that we are, into the provinces and into the nation of South Africa, into the continent of Africa, and globally. And now you will also see why in terms of our mission platforms and channels, it is important to engage those channels because they take us into other dimensions, greater reach. And so we know that the kingdom is effective and the gospel is reaching when we see people hearing it in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the world. And lastly, the area that we measure with the impact of the gospel as we preach throughout this year is spiritual impact. Spiritual impact has got a whole lot to do with the ministry of deliverance and healing. When we see those who have been possessed by demons being set free and receiving their minds back, in Luke chapter 9, the Lord Jesus gives authority to the disciples and by extension to us. He says, I give you power to trample over serpents and over scorpions and all the power of the enemy and you will drink poisonous things and they will by no means hurt you. 
And so you will heal the sick and they will be healed. And when we see the manifestations and hear the testimonies of people who say, I was sick and the Lord healed me. I was demon possessed and the Lord delivered me. We know that the kingdom of God is advancing in power. That's where we are for 2022. That is the kingdom gospel that we preach. Those are the signs we are expecting. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit that we're doing it. And it is timely because there's leverage, the context and the end time in which we are requires that we do so in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now stand on your feet and let us pray and thank the Father for the grace to execute on this message. Father, we thank you that you've given us a refresher even this morning of what you have mandated us to do, that you've reminded us that you've given us the power to do it, that you have, Father, told us that you are with us, and Father, that you've given us a pattern of geographies that we need to impact with the gospel. We thank you, Father, that as we go forth on missions throughout this year, that we will see the signs because we believe, and you have told us that signs, these signs, will follow those that believe in my name. Therefore, we thank you for the deliverance of the demoniacs. We thank you for the healing of the sick. We thank you for the opening of prison doors. We thank you for chains that are falling from the hands and shackles from the feet of your people. We thank you for spiritual ties that people were bound with that are broken and your people are set free. We thank you for great authority and dominion. We thank you for influence over the waters. We thank you for influence over the land and over the atmosphere unto the glory of your name. We thank you that Jesus is exalted in this community and wheresoever we preach the gospel and that signs will confirm the evidence of your power at work in our lives. Great testimonies, Father, will confirm that you are doing what you have commissioned us to do through us by the power of the Holy Spirit and by your word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.